Hello, and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today, we're looking at the single layer water shader model. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to disable my cell shader post processing um, because. You know, not everyone is using a global cell shader, so we're going to do this from a, a regular person's perspective. So, the single layer water node. Let's just create a plane, which is going to simulate our water, uh, and we're going to create a new material. Apply that to this. So, the first thing we do in order to enable the single layer water stuff is we're going to go to its shading model and instead of default lit we're going to go all the way down the bottom and click single layer water now you're going to be greeted with an error straight away that is to be expected so what we're going to do is go single layer water material output now this i'd probably just sit it underneath your regular material output stuff now let's just get some stuff going we just put zero in the base color we're going to put zero in the opacity um we'll put one in the refraction uh, if we actually just put zero in the absorption or something so we've created a a, a flat plane of nothingness uh whoop de doo what we're going to do now is create a parameter this is going to be called our water absorption absorption value after this we're going to add a multiply uh we're going to call this the water murkiness i guess is a good a good way to think about it uh, and then after this we're going to just divide it by 100 and the reason we're dividing it by 100 is because this has to be a really small number and it can just be a real pain in the anus to work with small numbers um with parameters and stuff so what we're going to do we're just going to chuck that into the absorption coefficient and we're going to select a, a slightly red color here. Now, because this is like based on physicalness and stuff, this is actually saying which wavelengths of light do we want to absorb in the water. So the color will end up being the opposite of this one. Now you can see we've already got something that looks kind of half decent. And if we move this up, you can see that the deeper something is, the more red light it's going to absorb so if it's very shallow it's going to look like this if it's up here it's going to look like that our murkiness parameter can adjust sort of the the strength of that um so if we kind of put it right here where we've got this like nice rock and put the murkiness all the way up then you can see that you know it's doing something uh go team now this might be all that you need for your water you might only need to use absorption coefficient um, there is the scattering coefficient, which is very similar. So we've now got water scattering set up, and that's just going into the water scattering coefficients thingamajig. Uh, we can change the color of this to, you know, blue or something. Um, and then adjust the intensity of it. Now this kind of... I mean, you can kind of see what it's doing. It's, uh, it's scattering the light. Um underneath the surface and obviously we don't want that too strong but you know a lot of the time you might not need this it's it's kind of an extra step uh, you can kind of see what it's doing here with the shadow a lot of this is just you know experiment with it yourself see what you can come up with hopefully i've just given you the the tools needed to start you know messing around with it now there are some other bits here there's the phase g which takes a negative one to one value um i've never touched this i'm guessing that the phase g input has something to do with kind of creating like chromatic aberration uh like you know the the direction of the scattering that's going on um and then the color scale behind water uh basically this is used for things like uh caustics and stuff core caustics caustics um, so if we just pump this up a little bit and you'll see that yeah, it's kind of lightening everything Behind the water um, you might have to use some like bump offset or something in order to get this looking nice And obviously you'd want to you know animate this and blah blah blah, but for now we're going to ignore that If you do leave this blank and these two blank your instruction count will be lower Then you can see we jump from 535 to 552 instructions, so you do save a little bit of juice by keeping them at zero. Um, 
For stylized water, this is basically all that you would probably maybe need. So that's kind of what it does do, the single layer water side of things, you know, the absorption and the blah, blah, blah. Those nodes there basically replace the depth fade that you'd be using on like a translucent material. But one of the advantages of this is that this is actually an opaque material. It's doing a separate pass that renders underneath. Um, and then I guess it kind of projects it onto the top layer. So now I guess what we're going to do is we're going to run over what the other inputs can be used for, for, for things like, you know, water. For example, the color up here isn't really going to change much. You know, if I put this to one, it hasn't actually changed anything. And that's because our opacity is at zero. So if we got a texture uh, and it was like cloud or something, and let's run it through like a contrast. And we're going to put one into that, uh, maybe two into the contrast. And then we put that into the opacity. Then some parts of this are going to be zero opacity. And other parts are going to be one opacity. Let's actually put this up a little bit higher. So this is what you'd be using for something like foam. Foam underwater. The refraction... Uh, it actually works a little bit weirdly. I found that 1.033 is a good refraction index to kind of start with, even though 1.33 would be more appropriate for something like water. And so the refraction interacts with the normal uh, input, output, as usual. Um, let's just grab a water normal map. There we go. Let's grab another one. Let's grab a panner. Let's put that in there and this in there. And we'll make this one go 0.1 and this one 0.01 in the other thing. We're gonna grab text coords, pump that into one of them and just make this one like 1.73 times smaller. Uh, now I just compiled that without actually plugging these in. So we're gonna go blend, angle, corrected normals. And we'll blend these two together. And now we're just going to chuck that into the normal. Cool. You can see we have some, you know, waviness. Um, if I had put this up higher, like 1.33, then it kind of looks a bit crazy. I mean, maybe that is correct, but it's just, it's just not as nice looking. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get rid of this color and stuff as well, because it's really annoying me. We'll put zero in the opacity. Uh, so one last little tip that I have is if you're doing anything like world position offset to make, you know, ripples appear around here and stuff, world position offset isn't actually going to affect the normals. So what you can do is a little hacky method. If we were doing something like distance to near a surface, if we wanted to do something like shore ripples, um, you can actually just add to the refraction index um, to kind of fake these ripples having bumps obviously like these don't actually have any any bumpiness but you know it obviously gives the effect if it was a little bit slower yeah damn uh five to four times slower so you can see now that it kind of looks like this is uh doing that thing that everyone likes so that is the single layer water node a uh, very quick rough explanation hopefully that's enough to get you started using it um it can seem very convoluted at first but hopefully this kind of gave you some ideas of you know how it can be used so just as a little example of what we can do with this shader model um here i've got some clear i guess lake water pond water it's got this algae stuff on top of it and you know i can skim that off um this is all a part of my landscape interaction system and whatnot so this algae is full opacity the water is zero opacity. I've got these ripples around, you know, distance fields and that kind of stuff. If you want to know how to do this thing with the distance fields a bit better, check out this tutorial here in which I explain how distance fields can be used. Um, and yeah, we've got this foam that, you know, appears when the, when the player moves and that kind of stuff. If we go to this level here, uh, you can see that I've actually set up some proper waves and stuff, and I've got these nice foam trails that are all a part of my um, my interaction system and that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, same thing. 
As the character moves through, we get these ripples, we get some foam that the character creates. And yeah, this is all made pretty easy. I mean, I say pretty easy, it took me like two solid days of work. You know, it's 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 made a lot simpler with the single layer water shader model. Um, it's a lot easier to get a nice looking result, basically. So I hope that you found this video educational and or entertaining. And if you do want to find out more about you know, how any of my water systems in particular work, feel free to join our Twitch streams, which happen most days of the week. So you can ask questions live there and that kind of thing. If you run into any kind of problems with, you know, single layer water node and whatnot, and you need to ask me something, feel free to do so in our Discord, which is always linked below. And if you do want to go one step further in supporting these tutorials and the rest of this channel and the development of this game, then you can do so at our Patreon, which is linked below, for as little as $1 per month. So I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.